All right. So this is arbitrary multi-tunic configuration for profit. This is yet <laughs> another gem someone made. I'm going to tell you about it. Series of talks. First of all, who the hell am I? My name is Tony. This is where I, you can find me to stalk people on various social media. <laughs> I am senior web developer at Mobi Wireless Management. I'm also the server admin and webmaster of GoNintendo.com. Um, I learn Linux. I had to learn Linux. It's kind of nice. Uh, my likes include fine jewels, sane text editors, elephants, <laughs> plumbers who ride uh, dinosaurs, and mystical, <laughs> the mystical space princesses who will kick your ass in a race. <laughs> so enough about me. I'm here to talk to you guys about a problem, a problem with a uh, problem with a very specific com country, a uh, company, not that, uh, a company called Eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, to understand the problem, you must first understand the universe. And this is the universe. iBot manages Apple adapters for corporate clients. Hashtag courage. <laughs> Particularly in the procurement and expense optimization of it, because, well, there's how many things can you throw on in a uh, Apple product nowadays? Um, they're going to throw away the power button soon, and we have to plug in an adapter for that. Um, <laughs> it's a multi-tenant uh, application, roughly over 80 clients, 24-7 traffic, heavily heaviest during our time, because USA forever, man. Um, <laughs> user base comprises of administrators, operators, and general end users to do their job. Uh, we do about two to eight production employees a week. Uh, hashtag ship it. Hashtag <laughs> fuck it. Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, serving up the app, we have about 40 unicorn workers, also known as a miracle. Uh, <laughs> uh, one strong note, about 12 rescue workers that handle short and long-running tasks, typically to import a metric crap ton of data, typically through long-running transactions or not. Uh, Postgres, decent amount of developers. And iBomb confers configuration over customization. We need a new feature. We want it to be switchable. We don't want to have to manually type out, if you're this client, you get this feature. So more in the universe, iBomb has a couple god objects in it, um, client, group, and user. They have about 80 clients. Of those, each client can have one to many groups, say about 200 groups in the database right now. And each group has a multitude of users, that's, which is the heaviest of all the tables. These basically comprise of well login information and configuration because we like configuration over customization. So Google flags, strings for drop downs, integers, you know, you can only have five of these for this client, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and a lot of the uh, jobs in all web requests, they kind of need these a lot. Like first thing when the request comes in is, uh, hey, let's get the client. All right, uh, logged in user. All right, we need their group. All right, and just keep iterating over that for the end of time for every web request. So that's the universe. Here's a scenario for you. Sales just sold a new client and we need a new feature. We agree to add the feature, or forced to. And uh, <laughs> I'm speaking generally. Um, and we decide that, oh, and not every client will want this feature. Maybe they want a modified version of the existing feature. So what do we do? Well, let's add another column to clients, or add another column to groups, another bool, whatever. All right. Here's a common-looking migration depending on which table you want to hit, and runs in less than 0.02 seconds locally. Great. All right. Ship it. Deploy in the middle of the day, the app goes down. At least he's got coffee. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we deploy, um, deploy hangs in the middle of the migrations. Uh, Unicorn starts queuing up uh, requests. Uh, background job just kind of sit there going, uh, OK. And um, when it finally does, when the migration finally runs, we just get exceptions at the wazoo. Emails everywhere, error, 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 error. And eventually, it's fine after that. <laughs> but it's about 10, 15 minutes of hell. Uh, Zero escalations. Yes. yes. <laughs> but all we did was add a bool to a relatively small table. Um, what's the problem? The problem is table locking. Altering a table is not a simple operation on a database, particularly in Postgres or even MySQL. 
an alter table in Postgres will always ask for an exclusive lock. That means no reads, no writes until you're absolutely done. Um, if you're setting a null value, it's quick uh, because it doesn't have to do a table rewrite. If you're adding a default, it has to rewrite the entire f data file. And while it's doing that, nothing else can hit the table. Also, um, if you happen to have long-running transactions for whatever reason, um, those transactions will block the migration for the alter table for running until those transactions is complete. So you have the transaction trying to turn through its stuff. Alter table says, all right, I'm next in line. No one else touched this. And then everybody else is like, I want this table and I can't get it. And that's where the lockup typically occurs. The other problem was the app exceptions. When it's finally done, we just get a slew of exceptions suddenly. This is an issue, a relatively complex issue in Rails. Um, adding a column to a constantly accessed table will throw an exception. And why is that? Um, here's the scenario. A transaction starts, background job, or just an active record save issues a transaction as well. Structure of the table changes while the transaction is running. And this can happen in a split second. So if the long running transaction wasn't even a thing, you still have requests making transactions. Active record caches pre uh, prepared statements for optimization. Basically does a quick single pass of uh, the query before it sends it to Postgres so it can say Postgres or MySQL a step as well to optimize the query. So, but when you alter the table, essentially all of those prepared statements are now invalidated because Postgres has to refresh its own stuff. Rails says, all right, Postgres, I'm in a transaction. Uh, here's an insert or here's an update or whatever. Postgres will say, um, sorry, um, error. The uh, cache needs to be busted. I cannot understand this. Go away, please. Rails will say, all right, refresh my, refresh your cache, please. Postgres, while still in a transaction, says, uh, no, I just raised an error. Your transaction is done. I don't care what the hell you're doing, GTFO. And so what happens is you get a slew of errors saying, error, current transaction is aborted, commands ignored until end of transaction block, which is literally what that is. We have erred in a transaction. We cannot do jack squat for the rest of it until that transaction basically rolls back and completes. There was an issue in Rails about this uh, way, way back in the 2.3 days, or early four days, I think. They claim to have fixed it in Rails 5. However, I dug slightly into the patch, and I think all they did was uh, make the error message make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, fixed. So, all right, so we have this problem. Um, we want to add features, but we can't just willy-nilly add columns to these tables. Well, what are our, what, what are our options? Well, we can uh, pause all the workers before deploy. Typically, this would be an after-hours thing because we have jobs wanting to run throughout the day. Um, doesn't solve the unicorns throwing errors until everything gets refreshed and requires team coordination. I'm all for team collaboration, but you know, saying, hey, I'm going to merge something in at 6 o'clock. Um, if you merge something in before that, it's going in prod. I hope you're ready for this. Um, we can deploy during the early hours of the morning. I wake up at god awful 5 a.m. because why not? Um, <laughs> but still requires team coordination. We have a People who work later, they say, all right, things done, this pull request looks good, let me merge that into master, and it gets deployed at 7 a.m., and you're not ready for it. Uh, or we just, um, you know, we have maintenance windows. Uh, once a month, we take everything offline to apply security patches. We could coordinate with the network team and do it then, but then it's like we can't do any, ship anything until the end of the month, especially if we need something right now. Or we could just stop building features. <laughs> we could do that. So quite frankly, all these options suck. Um, we need a better solution. Um, fancy that, yeah, that is a man with a hammer shoving a <laughs> head of lettuce with a hammer into a food processor thing. That's awesome. Yes. So here's a solution. Uh, this is a gem uh, I came across called Has Config. Um, disclaimer, I'm the author of it. <laughs> but, uh, this may solve our problem and will, may solve a lot of people's problems. Here's the uh, quick elevator pitch. So to solve the problem of adding, a col of adding columns to a table, we're going to add a column to a table. <laughs> we basically, fire fire. Yes, yes. We basically take one more hit, we add one more column. We'll use client as the example. We can add a text column and make it a serialized hash like you would normally do in Rails. Or if you're on Postgres, and everyone should be, you can have a JSON <laughs> column, or even better, a JSONB column if you're having a 
recent version of Postgres installed. That's queryable, by the way, people. It's like querying a, a YAML hash in my in a uh, MySQL. It's not fun. Um, in this model, let's list out what actually is configurable. We give it a name. We can give it a data type, a default value. We can use Rails validations on it in case we need something set specifically in a certain way. Um, which is basically allows us to move away from like, all right, new feature, add a bool, new feature, add a bool. Configurable feature that can do five different things depending on the time of day, drop down. We can move away from a lot of that. Well, at least on the database level. And we cannot, we don't have to change much of our existing code. To the developer, it's like I'm working with a regular attribute as if it was a regular column in the model, which is kind of great. And it's still queryable if you're using JSON or JSONB. Um, there are trade-offs for using JSON with Postgres. I'll leave that as an exercise to the user if JSON is actually a good use for it. Um, the recent Postgres Weekly, um, which is done by the same team that does the Ruby Weekly, uh, recently did a write up on it of a, a couple pitfalls you could come across with JSON. So here's an example. Fight fire with fire. Uh, I'm just going to use the serialized hash in this example. Um, add a column to clients called configuration. You can change it if you don't want to do that. Text space. Here's your model. Hash. Include my little adapter for hasconfig. And basically, you just call hasconfig macro, the hasconfig macro over and over and over again. Each line is essentially equivalent of, we want to add this column. We want to add this configuration. We want to add this configuration all the way down. Then you give it a config configuration. Um, you can give it a type, default value, and a validation tag. Type can be a string, an integer, or boolean. Default value is optional. Um, if not set, when you ask for the active flag, it would be nil if I didn't have a default set on it. And much like uh, regular columns, we just say, you know, validates foo, uh, presence true, validations, inclusion, numericality, presence, whatever you want. It's just like working with the regular attribute. Um, the actual README has a couple more examples like this. So what does all this malarkey give us? It gives us a getter and setter for each configuration. Like I said, it's as if it was a regular call. Um, form helpers, you treat them as the same. Um, unless your form library tries to do does some inference magic, like if you're using Formtastic, you have to manually say, no, no, this is a dropdown. No, no, this is a checkbox. It'll default to string otherwise. Um, IETNN, if you have to internationalize your app, treat them as regular columns as well. And treat your everyday column as if you're working with regular attributes. If you have a Boolean type configuration, you get the little question mark method along with it. Um, and like I said before, Rails validation and default values if you're so inclined. So here's a better example. So remember we have this model. Let's play around in Rails console. Let's make a new client, dot default color, we get green back. Why do we get green back on a new record? Because we have default value of green. Probably should have made these two slides and back to back. Oh well. <laughs> uh, secondary color nil because we don't have a default on it. Active defaults to false. Active question mark as false. Um, active passing in a string of one, which is what which is what would normally come from a Rails form. We'll set it to true. Integers. As you call valid on it, it's false. Why? Because we didn't set a category. So it's like working with a regular column that doesn't technically exist, but it's all there in the model that you can play with. Other features in this gym, um, like I said, the, the README gives a bit more examples, but a couple of neat features is um, chaining on configuration. So remember we have client uh, yeah, yeah, client group and user, they all had a configuration column on it, and they all have the same um, config name uh, foo for one of their configurations. You can actually start at the bottom and chain up with this gem. So using a slightly different invocation of the dot foo method, you can say, all right, current user dot foo, if it's blank, I'm going to go up to its group. If that's blank, I'm going to go up to its client. Whichever one actually gives me something back first, I'm going to use that value. And uh, another feature uh, goes in more detail on the README, um, it, the authorization rule-esque uh, configuration file. So if you don't want to mess with 
putting all this junk in your uh, model, you can make a single configuration file that says, all right, I'm going to declare a configuration called a primary color. It's going to have this stuff on it. And then in your model, you just say has config, primary color, and leave the rest off. So things up a little bit, stuff like that. If you have a lot of models with configuration, you can throw every all your known configurations in one file, file so they can even share it as well. And there are some override functionality to override some of the uh, defaults as well. Future features. Um, I'm hoping to add what I'm going to call a spring cleaning method uh, because you know code changes. Maybe we don't need that configuration anymore. We take it off. Well, that data is still in that serialized hash column, just kind of sitting there. So perhaps a cleanup method for removing unknown configurations from the uh, uh, main configuration column. Um, if you are have existing columns that you want to move to um, using hasconfig, a migration strategy. Just currently bring, bring your own migration for that if you already have columns that you want to move over. Um, Rails 5 introduces better or actually implements a real active model attributes API where you could have an active model and define your own attribute types. Maybe getting hold of that instead of some of the uh, defined methods I'm using in the gym. Um, and eventually maybe supporting each store, which is like a, in Postgres, it is a one level deep hash where everything, where all keys are strings and all values are strings. Um, notice in my examples, you get back actual Ruby data types and not the string true or the st string three, which is nice if you have a serialized column of a hash, it stores the Ruby objects, JSON stores the Ruby objects, each store does not. So benefits of this gem, um, one column, don't need to worry about this bulk graph again, pretty much. Um, and it's queryable if you're using JSON. I believe that's the syntax in Postgres, but it's like, give me everything that has this setting of true or whatever. So that's kind of handy. Uh, cons of this, um, there is some meta magic in my code, um, mostly to find methods. Um, to a new developer who is just starting out with Rails, it's like, all right, oh, I have my model. Let's go to the client, AP or PP client. There's only like five columns here, and yet I have all these other methods. Where did that come from? So that may be a small learning curve on that unless they actually dig into the code. Um, you don't always want to just throw everything into this gym uh, stuff for like, that you actually want to be able to ask questions for um, and run more optimized queries with, so like an active flag for a client. Probably, you know, I used it in my example, probably wouldn't work well in it because it's much quicker to query a query a rule column than to reach into JSON or whatever and filter through all those. Uh, Postgres, while you can query it, um, it's not that optimal. Uh, JSONB provides a bit more speed, but it's not quite there yet. Um, it's not an end-all, be-all solution. Um, you notice some People may think, why don't you just have a configuration table and use that? Well, that, is a, that could be a crap ton of queries. That is my argument. You already have these objects loaded into memory. Just use what's in memory so you don't have to query another table. For each request, you get to pretty much the same thing over and over again. Um, and like I said, old junk configurations could linger in that column. So why should you use this, Jim? Because I'm telling you to. But um, <laughs> don't think of it as a Bandage solution to a problem. Think of it as duct tape. I like duct tape. <laughs> um, duct tape's firm. It can it can hold stuff together very well, and you can leave it for years and just apply more if need be. <laughs> <laughs> but the real solution, okay, it solves an immediate problem that IBOM has. Uh, we want to add new features. We need to be configurable. We can't just willy nilly add columns, but and still deliver quick features. Um, it's straightforward. Um, it gets us the developers back to coding and not worrying about bringing down the app and seeing a senior developer run like hell throughout the cubicles screaming, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> and I don't have any better ideas, honestly, to fix this problem right now. Uh, but that's essentially it. Um, there's the uh, repo for the gym. Um, forgot one god for a reason, whatever you want to have these slides, I have a GitHub repo for that as well. Uh, small <coughs> plug at the end. Um, we all use Bundler, we all use Ruby gyms. Um, be nice if that, if those 
we mainly support it since that kind of runs our jobs essentially. There is a nonprofit called Ruby Together where you basically you get uh, you, companies or individuals can donate X dollars a month. You get access to a Slack uh, a Slack room with all the other contributors. You get updates and you help to basically help direct the future of Bundler and RubyGems.org. Um, the highest level goal for this uh, organization is making Bundler and Jim the same thing baked into uh, Ruby, which I think that would be the best thing ever. <clears throat> All right, uh, eight mail questions. Anyone? Questions? So those items that you can throw into this um, has been paid, mm -hmm. you guys still Schedule time, basically later night maintenance windows to yeah. you do add to it. Yeah, if, if, yeah, if we would want to touch that table for, like I said, active is, that should just be on the table itself. So we need to actually add something that we feel like, yes, we want to be able to query this very quickly. Um, yeah, we'll just take the hit on that and do proper scheduling. But this is to hopefully make this happen not as often. And on side notes, it's already been merged into the portal, Rick. <laughs> so it's there. Oh, we so don't care about it's being used. <laughs> yeah, load it here. Yeah. Yep. It's, so this it's works by creating a photo column in memory, and if that's not right, can you explain it to me like I'm an idiot? It add, you add it, it adds a column that's essentially Ruby will Rails will see it as a hash. Yeah. And the model when during parse time when the app boots up will make. Um, basically getters and setters. Fake, okay. well not fake, but they are getters and setters that basically wrap around, all right, I'm saying I want, it, I want to set this value to the setting, I'm just going to update the hash in the column. Okay. And when you want to call it, when you use the getter, it pulls it from the column and presents it to you. It awesome. makes it look like they're active record attributes. Right, right, right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. uh, is, you said there are two types, like JSON and uh, hash. So like, that question. What is the actual column type in Postgres? Um, in, the, in, 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 post, in Postgres, if you want the JSON data type, it's just JSON. You just say JSON. Rails forward and later knows exactly what to do with it. What was the demo? That was a. This is a, adding a regular text column, and you're using the serialization function of Active Record okay. that will tell Ruby, hey, this may be text, but um, yeah, it's technically YAML, so parse it as YAML and set it as YAML. So it looks really ugly directly. Yes, like, yes. That's only for old stuff. That, that's for old stuff, and if you're not on Postgres. But everyone should be on Postgres. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So uh, at IBOM, when, uh, <laughs> when you do have your monthly maintenance, do you essentially clean all that out and actually create real columns, or do you just leave it? Are you we could if, if we want to do that. If we feel like we want to go backwards and make the column later, we can. Or like I said, these are just feature. These are essentially feature flags. It's a feature flag column, so we can almost even take the time to move stuff into that column as well. Is something like Flipper do the same thing? If they're just feature flags? Yes, but when um, I would say on a multi-tenant app, it's easier just to say, all right, what's the? I'm on the subdomain. This is the client. All right, flag, 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 done. Okay. No, no additional yanking of queries sort of thing. Unless someone already made a gem like this, and in this case I will. <laughs> no, it's just you said feature flags. Like you, 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 you can treat it as feature, essentially feature flags. Does it work with Mongo? Fuck Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <please. laughs> No, it does not. <laughs> But, but it does work with any database active record supports. Just you have to use the serialized functionality if you don't have JSON. Anybody else? All right. All right.